Welcome everyone. I'm gonna make a free form bowl today. I took this old silicone mat and I flipped it over to use a smooth side and I made my own mold for a free form bowl with this silicone in a tube. It's not perfectly round, but it doesn't matter because the edges are always fluted when I do bowls. And the colors I'm using today are Satori White by Eye Candy, a Skyline Blue by Eye Candy, and a deep red. And I will link these below in the description box. Anytime you start a project, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you clean your mold with alcohol, just so it's perfectly clean. And then I always try to remember to wipe it down with a lint-free towel, just to try to stop as much lint as possible from floating to the surface. I wanted my resin to sit for a little bit to thicken up so they don't mix together too much. So I'm waiting for about 100 degrees before I start pouring these. So I just have this little heat gun to let me know what the temperature is. Also make sure that your pigment is as deep color or as clear or transparent as you want before you move on with your project. And these look pretty good. I want mine opaque. And it also looks like it has come up to temperature, so let's get ready to pour. Right now I'm just going to pour my red and blue. I don't want to put the white in right away because I don't want the white to completely disappear. I don't want the white turning pink or light blue. And I promised the woman who ordered this bowl that it would look white. So I'm going to wait till the end to pour the white. So I'm just going to randomly pour the blue and the red on in any which way. There's really no rhyme or reason in how I'm pouring it just to get it all on the surface. And then in a little while, I will take a stick and swirl it together. This mold is approximately 17 inches in diameter. I mixed up 16 ounces of resin because that's generally what I always use in this bowl. However, you'll see that it was short just a little bit. And the reason why is because I typically put an edge around in shell or in stone or some kind of surface um, around the edging. But this woman did not want anything around her edge. She just wanted complete resin. So I forgot to pour the extra resin in here. So push everything to the edges, make sure it's all around before you mix up any more. And then, like I said, go back, mix a little bit more color, and then I'm gonna add it to here. That way it fills in the empty spots. I'm just gonna take the heat gun and soften up these lines a little bit. I definitely don't want them looking like this. And then I'm going to use a little silicone stick that I love, I use it for everything. And I'm just gonna swirl these colors together a little bit more. Okay, so I did mix up four ounces more, like I said earlier. I did put some clear on here, but I did mix up some red and blue after that. And I'm just gonna fill in that hole and it was plenty enough to fill that little spot in. Here's a little bonus for you. This is how I clean my resin jars immediately after I'm done pouring them. Well, within a couple minutes anyway. 
So I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to wipe out as much as I can possibly wipe out. And then I'm going to pour 99% alcohol into the bottom of the jar, get some clean paper towels and wipe the rest out. And voila, it's finished. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to wait till tomorrow when it's cured and pick out all the little pieces. This is the perfect way to do it quick. I was done with all three of these jars in less than five minutes. You're welcome. It's finally time for the white. The white's been sitting for quite a while, but it's perfect. It doesn't matter. There's such a small amount. It's ne never going to like flash cure or anything. So I'm just going to take this popsicle stick and drizzle really, really thin lines. She didn't want much white, just enough to see that there is a little bit of white. So I'm just going to drizzle all over randomly. And then I'm just going to take my heat gun. I'm going to push those lines a little bit each way so they kind of blend in. Not really blend in with the color, but they'll move so they're not such hard lines. So just take your heat gun and just move them wherever you'd like them. Add a little bit more white if you want to. And then we are going to just babysit this for the next six to eight hours until we can unmold it and get it over a bowl for our final dry. Okay, it's been five hours and this is actually the most perfect bowl that I've babysat. I came at the exact time that I needed to. There are no fingerprints being left on it at all. It is very pliable. It is not like pulling anywhere. So it's coming out of the mold really nice. So now I'm just going to drape it over this metal bowl to get the shape that I want. Now, as you'll see in the next clip, I did put the bowl upside down, so I did have to flip it over. I do not want this side to be on the bottom where you're really not going to see it. I want this to be the inside of the bowl. So just disregard what you're watching because it will get flipped over. So just uh, position your bowl exactly the way you want it and use little props if you need to to hold things in place if you want it fluted like I'm going to do. I'm just going to use some of these glitter jars just to hold it in place overnight until it, it uh, fully cures.
So after all that work, getting it just where I want it, then I realized, like I said, it was upside down. So here I am starting all over again. It's ready to come off. It's about 90% cured. It's still just a tiny, tiny bit bendy, but I can move on with the next step exactly how it is. Now, I think the inside is just stunning. It's beautiful. I don't think it needs a clear coat. I think it's perfect the way it is. Now, the outside, I am going to put a clear coat on, and the edges, when I'm completely done with all the clear coats, I'm going to dremel the edges down. So there's a lot of sharp edges because my mold was handmade and it wasn't perfect. So I just dremel those down and then they will get a painted to go with whatever color she wants. Now I should just mention the reason this side is dull is because it's not a professional mold and because my silicone mat that I used as the mold was dull. That's why this side is dull. So I do take the extra step and I sand this side down with a pretty heavy grit. I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to go over and trust me when I say this, I have learned my lesson multiple times. Do not miss one spot. If you have to go over with a clear coat, Sand that down, go over it and over it and make sure you do not miss one spot or you will pay for it and you will have to do this entire step all over again. Now the reason I'm sanding it is because if you do not sand it, you're going to end up with fish eyes and they will be everywhere and it's a nightmare to get rid of them. And the last time I did it and I had fish eyes everywhere, I really just wiped the entire bowl down when the resin was wet because I was not about to let that dry and sand this entire bowl down getting in all those crevices. So I'm now using a, a less grit 220 right now just to get it nice and smooth. Now of all the steps of this entire bowl, I am going to reiterate, these final steps are the most important to get this sanded every nook and cranny go over it make sure you're wearing gloves while you do it because you do not want any oils from your skin getting on this dull side and the sanded side trust me on this one so after it is completely sanded and you trouble and triple checked it then I wash it down with cold water and then I wash it twice with alcohol while I'm wearing my gloves because I do not want the oils on my hands touching this side of the bowl. So I just generally wash that whole bowl with a lint-free rag and then I'm going to go over the whole bowl a second time a little more carefully to make sure I got every single section before I move on.
Okay, I just mixed up 40 milliliters of resin for this outside. It should be plenty enough. In fact, it was the perfect amount. This bowl is about 17 inches in diameter. And you don't want too little for sure. Too much is always better. Um, so if you have too little and you stretch that resin across that sanded surface, it's going to split and give you fish eyes. So you don't want too little. If you think you have too little, go mix up more and add it because it's going to take quite a while to dry that thin. If you put too much on, it's just going to run off the edges and go everywhere and make a mess everywhere. And it may pull too much off anyway. So you'd want the perfect amount. You want a nice, decent coat. Now, some of it is dripping off the sides, which is fine. That's going to happen. It's pointing down. That's what happens. So you're just going to cover it with your hand all over. Go over it. Make sure nothing is missing. Make sure no fish eyes are happening. And then let it sit for about an hour. And what I did, which I didn't show on camera, is after about an hour, there were little puddles around the bowl from where it was dripping onto the silicone pad. If there was any tiny little spot that I wanted touched up or I wanted resin put back on, I took my little silicone pen and I lifted up with the pen off the silicone pad and I just dripped it right back onto the surface of the bowl and it just kind of melded right in with the rest of the resin. And that's really all I had to do. This one came out really, really good. I'm so happy that I did all those steps this time and I didn't have any trouble with fish eyes. And then I'm just gonna let it cure overnight. Okay, it's all cured. Everything's dry. Everything looks good on the back side. So now we're going to move to the edges. As you can see, because of the homemade mold that I have, the edges are jagged and they can cut your fingers. So I'm just going to take this outside for a few minutes. I'm going to dremel down this edge until it's flat. That way I can paint on a black paint. Okay, that only took about five minutes if you have a good Dremel and a nice sanding piece of paper on the end of that Dremel. So I just went around this edge and I made sure everything laid down flat so I have like a nice edge to paint with this paint pen. So I'm going to do it uh, black just because I know the client doesn't want anything blingy in silver or gold. So I'm just going to do it in black because it does need to have something done to that edge. And then I will also, I did Dremel just barely the inside and barely the outside just to make sure it was more of a rounded edge and not a straight edge. So I'm just going to put that pen all around the edge. That's the thick edge, I mean. And then I'm going to barely bring it on the inside and barely bring it on the outside just so it covers that whole curvature of that edge now. And this is it after it's been completed.
after looking at this bowl on the inside, there was one ring around the center where you see me sanding. So I'm going to start this whole center just because I'm not happy with where it was sitting on the bowl as the mold. It made a ring around that bottom center and it's dull. So there's a, like a dull ring around. And if it was me buying it, I would not be happy with that. So that just means now I have to sand this entire inner portion of the bowl down every single portion, just like we did the backside. So nothing gets fish eyes when I coat it. So I'm going to sand this entire thing down, get it washed and do it all over again. This took some muscle, but I did finally finish it. It did take a little more time than I wanted it to, but it's going to be completed correctly now. Okay, I rewashed it again with soap and water to get all of that dust off. I'm going to spray it all down again with alcohol. This is 99% alcohol. Wearing gloves, again, do not use your bare fingers on this. You do not want to cause any reason for fish eyes to happen. And then I did, and I didn't show it on camera, I did just go along that edge with the paint pen again because when I sanded, it barely took some off, not too much, but I just wanted to get it freshened up so I can run my finger around that edge with resin on it. That way that paint will never come off. Okay, hopefully this will be the last coat of resin. This bowl is taking longer than I wanted it to. So I mixed up 40 milliliters, uh, part A and part B. So 40 total, 20 of each. And I mixed it for five minutes and then I let it sit out in that container for approximately 10 more minutes after I was done mixing. So about 15 minutes it's been sitting out just to get it thickened up because it is gonna be running downhill. So I wanted it as thick as I can get it without having its tart getting gummy on me. So I'm just gonna pour it in the bottom. And I did pour half at a time, but I do need the whole thing. So I will pour the whole thing in there. And then I'm just going to smear it up the sides and get every portion covered. Look for fish eyes. Um, I did not have any on this bowl. Thank God it was all that hard work I put into all that sanding so definitely do a good job sanding if you're going to do a bowl and then i do run my finger around the whole edge and it will just seal in that that black paint so hopefully this bowl will be finished after it's cured Okay, it's been about an hour and the resin that pooled at the bottom from dr dripping down, I guess, is nice and thick. So I'm just going to scoop up a little bit with this resin pen, I guess you could say. And I'm just going to place the little scoop of it over just a couple areas that I want to touch up. And just letting it sit there is going to flow back together. And then I'm just going to take my torch and heat the bottom just so it will flow back together as well.